Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my favorite top beauty products for fall. I'm talking about nail polishes, perfumes, eyeshadow blushes, and uh, lips. That's pretty much it. But I have so many products to talk about. I chose not to put a limit on my things because I just felt so much pressure. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Grab yourself something to drink. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes stuff. And let's get started. I always get questions about what I have on my nails and I always feel so bad because it's always dip colors. I do my own dips at home. I just like having them because they're stronger. They last for almost a month, like three weeks, let's be realistic. Um, and then I don't have to worry about my nails. And the color for fall is this one from Artistic and it's called From AM to PM. I love this color. It's, it's a beautiful brown, but it's not too warm. It's not too cool tone. I think it's just such a a good color and again in my last few videos whenever I wore this there were so many questions about what do I have on my nails and this is it right here I do think that they have corresponding nail polishes or gel polishes I'm not a hundred percent sure but if I can find that info I will link it down below and then the other nail polish that I pull out during the fall season is this one from OPI this is called endless sun -ner. and I think it's like perfect for fall it's not quite that orange orange color it's that brown orange you know it's not gonna be that pumpkin color but it still has quite I feel like I'm gonna make a mess quite a lot of orange in it but it's it's a it's a good brown color I put this on my toes um so these are the two polishes that I think or like the nail products that just put me in the mood for fall. Now I can't pretend and say that this is the first time I'm recording this video. This is my second time because of this new microphone. Um, I thought it was plugged in and everything but it was not. So we have no sound for the other one. Let's move on to perfumes before I start crying. Um, if you know, you know. If you record videos and you know how, how long it takes to record and then you figure it out that you didn't plug in something or didn't do something it's just i want it to cry but here we are it's going to be even better this time poets of berlin this i've talked about in my last video on my favorites september favorites uh so i'm not going to say here long but this is a beautiful to me it's fall it reminds me of just streets of europe in the rain I don't know. That's kind of what I think about. Um, and this is a blueberry with lemon opening. And then it kind of sets down to a vanilla, um, a sandalwood, and vetiver. To me, that blueberry still stays throughout the day. Ooh, I love it. It's, it's unique. This is not a blind buy. I suggest you testing it out if you have it somewhere around you. But I absolutely love it. And it just fits fall for me. The other one that I have here is this BDK Gris Chanel. I discovered this last year. I think it was during winter time that I purchased it, like in between fall and winter. But to me, this is definitely a very fall fragrance. It smells like black tea. It, ha it has it in there and that kind of scared me a little bit. I was like, how, how will that smell? But oh, smells like warm chai like you're reading a book and you're wearing a cashmere sweater because it has that scent of cashmere oh, it's so beautiful warm and perfect perfect for fall i feel like a lot of people are gonna love this the poets of berlin it's you need to test it out to make sure that you enjoy all those scents but this one is very pleasing every time I wore it last year again I only wear it in the fall winter personally but I don't think it doesn't work in the summertime like you could absolutely wear it um but I'm weird like that with my fragrances and uh, I always got compliments on this and got stopped and asked what am I wearing so I'm excited to pull those back out let's move on to some eyeshadow palettes I have here two larger eyeshadow palettes and if you know me you know I like very simple eye I don't wear a ton of color 
I mean, I used to, but the older I get, I feel like the less I want to put on my eyes. But there is color. Like in fall, I like to just go a little bit with some color on the eyes, greens, rusty colors, reds, uh, browns. So I, I do enjoy some color during the fall season. And the first one is this Pat McGrath. This is the Midnight Sun. I mean, it's fall, fall in the palette, right? Look at those colors, like those deeper, warmer, redder colors, rustic, this green, oh, oh, so, so beautiful. Even this purple right here, oof, it looks so beautiful during the fall season. Of course, this red color, I'm talking about this one right here just beautiful and my favorite I would say it's this kind of a golden brown color oh yes let me swatch this one because I think it is such a good brown that undertone is so flattering on me I don't like super yellow golds uh, even browns that have that shimmer gold if it's too yellow it doesn't look good on me but yeah this and let's, of course, swatch that red color because this will just pull everything in. Look at that. Just fall. Fall right here. The quality, again, is amazing. You can absolutely get these on sale. Don't ever pay full price for these Mothership palettes because they're just always on sale. You can get them 20, 30% off sometimes. Um, and I bought this on sale. But it is top, I want to say three Pat McGrath, my top three mothership palettes from Pat McGrath. The only one that I don't use much is this yellow right here. It's again, that's that yellow color that I don't love on me, but what I do, I pair it with this green. So I put the green down first and then I top a little bit of this yellow on top. And that's the only way I use that yellow. It's just, you know, with my skin tone, I don't like that, but with a yellow on top of the green, it works really well. And you have the most beautiful topper that I think Pat McGrath ever has created. It's this one right here. I'm gonna swatch it on this side. Oh, look at that color. It is perfection. You can absolutely sheer it out and just have these sparkles all over your eyes or in the center. It's probably the best topper that works with anything. It's not that super intense white. It's definitely light, um, but it's not that almost cool tone white. It's just, it's just perfect. Look at that. The other big eyeshadow palette is this one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Nouveau palette. And I mean, it's so, so beautiful. I love these deeper greens. Um, I was gonna say olivey, but this one right here is not necessarily an olive color, but I love this one during the fall, mostly pairing it with this more rusty color. So beautiful. You also have this dual chrome color right here. You do have, you know, some pastel colors, but if you take, for example, this one out, there we go, kind of. I don't wanna mess up. Uh, my swatches, but it's definitely more fall. You have some pastel colors there, but you can absolutely put them with the deeper colors and have, you know, a fall pattern. But look at those. So, so beautiful. I love even this deeper color right here. How can I show you? There we go. To me, those are beautiful fall colors. The quality is impeccable in this one. Even this green that is kind of a little bit more muted, which I actually really, really like. It blends in so, so well. The purple blends in well. Anyway, I just love this palette and it reminds me of fall a lot more than summertime. I don't, I don't even remember if it was released during fall season or spring. I don't remember, but I think it is a beautiful palette. You have some more neutral shades or basic shimmers like this one right here, this here, but it is a beautiful palette. I know she came out after this one with a rose one and a couple other ones. This is the last one I purchased from her, but I love the formula. She did something different here. I was gonna mention the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. I actually have it right here, but 
I, I would say that this has a little bit more color for me personally. I think if you enjoy color, this is a great fall palette as well. You have some muted tones and I can see it working so well for fall. But personally, I was like, would I really pull that out? Like, is that my favorite? Let's just say that because I will pull it out for fall because I think it's a very fall appropriate, but I don't think it's my top favorite because the colors are just a little bit more bright. In the fall, I want muted colors. Now moving on to smaller palettes, I have here my Tom Ford Smoky Quartz palette. This I think won like my number one eyeshadow palette of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. It looks very boring because it is, but the quality, the colors, the tones, this screams fall to me. I just love, love this cream formula. It's like a cream to a uh, powder from Tom Ford, but it, they're just so, so good. Let me swatch all of them. You can kind of see the shift in them, like the creaminess. These go on lighter and then you can really build up the colors, which I really, really like, but there was no question. This is a fall palette for me. Actually, it's a all season palette, but especially for fall, pulling this out, it's perfection. I absolutely used it during the summer, spring, all of them, but I think it deserves to be here. Uh, the next one is this tiny one from Victoria Beckham. This is the Tweed, and this is kind of similar with a Tom Ford to where like you can use it any time of the year. It's not specifically just fall, but these colors to me, I mean, they look very, very fall appropriate, mostly because you have that red in there, which I actually have on my eyes right now, this palette. I used a little bit of the lightest brown, tiny bit of the red. I just wanted to show you how you can wear the red extremely wearable. It almost looks like I don't have it on. It just gives a little bit of warmth to the eye look. Um, and just a little bit of this brown on the lash line. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to remember if I did do that, but I, I think I did just a little bit. I love how small this is. I love the blendability. Um, I'm traveling quite a bit lately, even with the kids. And I always bring this because it's so tiny, perfect. I love the formula and it's very fall appropriate. Now the makeup that I have on right now, it's been hours and hours and sweating and you know talking a lot so I feel like it's still holding up really well I should touch up my lips which I'll, I'll share with you that in just a second but uh, let's finish the eyes I have one more it's this one right here which I almost didn't put it in because it is ridiculously priced it is so expensive this is the Shantekai giraffe however i can't deny the color the color is such a beautiful brown that is not too warm and this all over the lid it just it makes it for me it has some sheen in it like slight gold shimmer in it but it's so soft and beautiful that anybody can wear this it's very blendable I really like this color so, so much. Again, it is not worth the money. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. Like, look at this. It has the beautiful giraffe on it. And it's, it's just nice. I know they do donate a small percentage. I want to say 3%. I could be wrong, but something really small to wild animals. But I would rather me physically donate it to them than spend... $52, I think it is, uh, on one sh single shadow. I just, anyway, that's just my opinion. Let's move on to blushes, and I have quite a few here. So I'm gonna start with what I'm wearing right now. This is the Danessa Marix in the color Jubilee, and look how perfect this color is for fall. Oh, I love, love, love the color. I love the formula. I can't believe it's still on this well, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more because like I mentioned, this makeup has been on for a long time and it's been through a lot. So it's so easy to blend in. This formula from Danessa Myricks, it's one of the most forgiving and easy formula even though I added way too much right now, I'll take some off. It is just so blendable, very pigmented. The colors are a little bit 
intense and bright but look how fast and easy it was to blend this out i also put this on my lips sometimes with just a lip liner it does a really good job the formula um, is very special because it's cream but it dries down and it's a very blurring on the cheeks very very good formula even if you have oilier skin i think you would enjoy these because they don't stay sticky at all amazing i have another color from her i just wish she kind of came out with some that are more nude colors or not quite as pigmented and intense because the jubilee is one of the least pigmented and you saw that a it puts a lot on but that is definitely one of my favorite fall blushes and it's very very flattering the next one is another cream but it's quite different than the nanessa marix this is the merit in the color fox and again they're all gonna be these warm terracotta kind of rust colors um it's just what i like for fall but this is in the color fox and it's more translucent blush it's amazing if you have drier skin if you have oily skin i could see how these could slip and slide a little bit because they don't ever completely set down like the danessa Myricks. these are even though they're sheerer, there's the this one still has quite a lot of pigment for the Merit blushes, and I really like this color. I wear this one on kind of no makeup, makeup kind of day because it is a little bit more glowy and glossy almost. That when I have a fuller foundation underneath. I don't love that on top. So I just wanted to mention that about the Merit blush. Another amazing blush that has been in my collection for quite some time and it is still oh, my go-to and not just for fall. This is just an everyday blush. This is in Patrick Ta, She's So LA and it looks like a bronzer but it's not. You can see how there's some rosiness in this color. The powder, it definitely has more of a... Uh, leaning a little bit more bronzy but it on the cheek it, it definitely looks like a, a blush i would not want to put this color as a bronzer and here's the swatch of the cream and the powder mixing them is perfection i have had this for many many years and it still always comes up um, daily honestly i have just an incredible amount of blushes i cannot wait to do the declutter on them but this one will always be in my collection. It's beautiful. It's definitely that terracotta color, but it has something special. There's something very special in this color because it's not too warm, you know? So it's kind of like a nude blush, just more intense. I think it's a very flattering, a beautiful formula and it just had to be in in this roundup another cream product is this one from rare beauty this is in the shade love and you will see why it is a fall color <laughs> it's straight up red um, but it does have a warm red i'll spread it out it, it's it's incredibly pigmented so you kind of have to be careful but i don't put it on my cheeks i put it on my hand blend it in with a brush and then go it go with it in my cheeks otherwise it will be too much um, but i love the color i love it spread out i think it's just so warm and beautiful and perfect perfect for fall super intense though if you're heavy-handed with your blush application do not try this blush on okay and then the last blush i want to mention is the newest one in my collection this is the givenchy loose blush in the color for organza sienna i mean you can kind of see from here it is so beautiful i've been wearing this quite a lot lately um it doesn't swatch well so I will try to swatch it for you. It swatches much lighter. Actually, you can kind of see the color right there, probably better than my swatch. Yeah, so it doesn't. It just doesn't swatch well. Um, but that's kind of the color that you're gonna have on your cheeks, and it's beautiful. It's buildable, but it's not too intense initially. 
um, I think it's so, so flattering. Again, beautiful for fall. And I've heard a lot of people saying that they don't want to try this because it's so messy because you have to put the product in here. But if you keep the little puff on top all the time and then you um, put the top on, it will not be messy at all. I don't have any issues. However, once I did forget to put the little applicator on top and there was a lot of blush everywhere. So I found that I don't have an issue with that. The same with their powders, everything. I make sure I keep the sponge on top or the puff, the puff on top. I think all we have left is lips and there's a lot of them. So let's get started. Um, I am going to start with what I'm wearing today, which I wanted to show you this on camera. I've had this for, like I mentioned, I don't even know how many hours, six hours at this point. And this is, by the way, the Armani Lip Maestro in 209. And it looks so, so dark. I'll just watch it right here so you can see. You can get it dark like that. But after a while, after a lot of talking, it does start fading into more of this red. Um, initially, when I applied it, I didn't do quite full opacity. I used a lip liner with this, but I'm gonna apply it again so you can see. Maybe I'll stop talking. So this is how it looks like full opacity and it's still absolutely love it but the one thing that i've noticed with this color is that throughout the day it fades into more of that redder warmer color not quite this intense color um which i don't mind honestly it looks beautiful it fades beautifully but um i thought that that would be a great opportunity to show you how it looks fresh applied and then um, after it faded, I'm taking a lip liner and just cleaning up those edges. This is a, the one lip product that I will use with all of these lipsticks that I show you. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills in Cool Brown. It is a beautiful, perfect brown color to almost calm down all the other reds or orange or whatever it is that I put on. This paired with that is perfection. I want to say that I've had this in my bag and this one alone for weeks now. This is all I reach for, even when I wear a gloss. And I will show you with you the next gloss, why not? This is Clarence in the shade Cherry 03. And I will put this on top of that. That is a beautiful duo. Obviously, I'm gonna blend in the lip liner uh, a little bit faded into my lips, so it's not gonna be such a sharp contrast, but I combine these two all the time and I think it is so, so perfect. Juicy, but very fall-like, not too much color, but enough. I don't know. I just really like that combo so much. Um, so that's another great one for fall. Moving on to the next deepest shade. And this is the one I wore in a reel that I did. The reel was on the Patrick Ta glitter toppers. And I got so many questions about my lip product. Not so much on the eye toppers. It was what I was wearing. And this is from Huda Beauty in the color Boss Chick. And it is a very creamy formula satin finish and perfect. It's perfect for fall. You can build it up or you can sheer it out a little bit. I think in the video I wore it again with my lip liner from Anastasia, this, and I took a napkin and just pat it once to take that edge off. It was just a little bit too intense, right? So if I put full on, it's still very wearable. But for the video, I didn't want it to be quite that deep. A beautiful, beautiful formula. It's a very, very creamy. But the color for me, it's perfect for fall. It's not super brown, which I love brown for fall. Don't get me wrong. But it just, there's something about the undertone combined with the depth of the lipstick that makes it very, very beautiful. It's kind of like when you want to wear a deeper color, a little bit more intense, but you don't want to look vampy. That is a perfect shade for that. Four more lip products and then we are done. Let's move on to an old 
favorite. This is the NARS in Slow Ride. If you have not tried these NARS liquid lip products, you have to. This is the lightest lip product that I have in my entire collection. Extremely pigmented. And this is more of that really brown undertone, um, which works really well with my skin tone. Not everybody can pull off this color. It can look a little bit orangey on some people. I absolutely love it. Um, but there's NARS just has so many good colors. But I want... I just want you guys to go and test out this formula. It is perfection, very pigmented. It dries down, it lasts really well. You do not feel it on your lips whatsoever. It is incredibly light and look at that color. It screams fall, yes. I've, I think this was in my like last year's fall makeup. Perfect, perfect shade. You need to check it out, everybody or most people have NARS in their Sephora and you just need to, to try it. Um, again, this color is slow ride, beautiful brown autumnal color. Another one is from Lisa Eldridge. This is in the color of Fair and I've been wearing the fawn color from her nonstop. I really like that one. Affair is just too deep for me for an everyday nude, but for fall, it becomes an everyday nude. Now, this formula is their liquid lipstick. I think they call them Velveteen. Um, she has them also in her regular lipstick formula, but I love this liquid formula because it lasts all day. You can eat, you can kiss somebody, these will still be on. Very long lasting, very nice on the lips as well, not too drying. They're... I don't want to say that you never feel them on. You feel them on in the beginning when you apply, but then they kind of just become one with your lips and I have no issues with it. Uh, so a fair from Lisa Eldridge is a beautiful fall color um, on many different skin tones. Another liquid lip is from Rose Ink. Now I love this formula from Rose Ink. It is a little bit more mousse-like, not like transfer proof but very long lasting. Nothing beats Lisa Eldridge, okay? When we talk to transfer proof, but um, this is right here. It's a little bit more, more muted than the Lisa Eldridge Affair. You can see it right here. This is the rose ink. Oh, did I say what color this is? Is in two or one. And I really like, I like this one, like that blur effect on the lip. I really like wearing it like that. It's so beautiful. Again, put a little bit of that brown liner on top of it. Such a good fall look. I would say this can become more of that nude fall appropriate. It's not quite as deep as the Affair on, on my skin tone, of course, but that is another one that I've discovered this past year that I think it is beautiful. And then the last product is this beautiful Lisa Eldridge Velvet Sorcery. I had to put it in here. It is my favorite lipstick from her. It looks very almost rose undertone here, but the way I wear it is I, I definitely fade it out. I don't do full opacity. It is so, so beautiful. I also have the Sorcery lip line as well. You see the difference in the Affair and the Sorcery. Sorcery is not quite as... I want to say caramel base as the affair, but um, it's one of the prettiest colors from Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, in my opinion, and what I really enjoy. I don't tend to use uh, colors that have that much rose in it, because you can definitely see it compared to the rose ink, but for some reason, the undertone of this works so well with my skin. I get a lot of compliments where when I wear this color. I have an issue with the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, some of them, that they are very pink on me. Everything turns very bright and pink on me. Um, but this one, it, it looks like that on my lips and I really like it. I would, I was debating if I should put this one in a winter lipstick video because I kind of feel like this is just a little bit more winter leaning 
um, but I thought I would just mention it here because it's it's beautiful. I almost finished this video without mentioning this palette right here. How could I? This is the Hourglass in the Snake palette with the leopard packaging. Um, this, I've used it in so many videos lately. I put in my favorites. I've done reels with it. It's a beautiful fall palette for me, especially because of these blushes. They are so beautiful. Even on my light skin tone, I feel like I can get a beautiful fall appropriate blush. And I love these palettes. This one for fall is my favorite. It's kind of all I want to reach for. And it just makes me happy. The only problem is the highlighter is a little deep for me, but that's okay. I will put up with that. Everything else it's just fall. So that is the last product that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love to hear your thoughts down below on some of the products that are your favorite. And that's it for now. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.